Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be comparing the Sony WF-1000XM5s to the best of the best. I'll be covering 13 categories and ranking all six earbuds in each of them. So let's see how good or bad the XM5s are, because as usual here, we're going in depth. Now starting with category one, we've got comfort. And the XM5s, they are a massive improvement over the XM4s. They were too chunky for me and the ear tips were too firm, not comfortable at all. The XM5 tips are the same foam style, but they're much softer feels less intrusive in the ear canal. Still not as comfortable or easy to get a seal than just using regular silicon ear tips. So despite the improvement, I am still gonna be ranking the XM5s last for comfort. I can still wear them for over two hours with no issues. The comfort is okay, but the rest of the buds are just better. If I use silicon ear tips on them, they're just as comfortable as the Momentum 3. But these earbuds were designed around the foam ear tips. So if you use silicon, you're gonna lose noise canceling strength. And because there's actually now mesh on the ear tips themselves, not on the driver nozzle. If you use other ear tips that don't have mesh on it, there's a high chance that ear wax is gonna get through the driver and that is gonna be pretty hard to clean. For the price you're paying, Sony should have just included silicon ear tips with the same mesh on them. So AirPods first, OnePlus second, Galaxy Buds third, Momentum fourth, Bose fifth, XM5s last. Again, keep in mind, this is how the buds fit my ears. It's gonna be a little bit different for everyone. Next category is security. So on the XM5s, once I am able to get a good seal, which does take a bit of time, I have to take the earbuds in and out and really maneuver them to make sure I get a proper seal. Once they're in, the buds barely budge out no matter what I'm doing. Weight training, they worked great. Leaning over for rows, lying down for bench press, squats and deadlifts, they stay in completely fine. I do lose a seal every now and then and just need to quickly readjust. So with that, I'm ranking the XM5s in the fourth spot, OnePlus first, Galaxy Buds second, Bose third, AirPods fifth, and the Momentum's in the last spot. But all the buds I can train with, I actually use the Momentum as my go-to training earbud. I just have to readjust them a little bit more often. There's no way they're gonna fall out. And a bonus around here, if you like using your earbuds when running, I wouldn't recommend the Momentum 3. They move around a lot and make a lot of body noise from the impact you make on the ground. So do the XM5s, but it's kind of manageable and the rest of the earbuds are completely fine for me when running. Next, we have the IPX rating. So one plus in the first spot, you get an IP55 dust and water resistant rating on the earbuds, as well as an IPX4 rating on the case. Galaxy Buds 2 Pro have an IPX7 waterproof rating on the earbuds, so you could accidentally submerge those buds in water and they should survive. In third spot, the AirPods Pro 2, IPX4 on the buds, and the case also IPX4. And the rest of the earbuds tied last since only the earbuds have an IPX4 rating. I was honestly expecting to see some case water resistance on the XM5s. OnePlus Buds Pro 2 have it, and they're much cheaper. Next category is the case and battery life. Sony did well to give you the same battery life the XM4s have, but they massively shrunk down the buds as well as the case. So you get six hours from the buds, 24 hours in total, and that's with noise canceling on. And in my test at 60% volume, I got well over that seven hours and 43 minutes, and that's using the AAC codec on a Samsung Galaxy S10e. But here are all the earbuds with the battery life you're getting, the fast charge, and the XM5 case is the third slimmest case, as well as having the quickest fast charge, chuck the buds in the case for three minutes, you're gonna get one hour's playback. One plus just behind with 10 minutes giving you three hours of playback. So taking this all into account, the XM5s are gonna be ranked third, just behind the one plus buds, since that case is larger, but it is slightly thinner. AirPods in the number one spot, being the thinnest case. You get the most battery, extra features like the lanyard loop, speakers in the case, and the Find My Case feature, which none of the buds have. Bose Quiet Comfort in the last spot since it's a pretty large case and they're the only pair that don't have wireless charging. Next category is controls. Now on all previous Sony earbuds, the controls are never great. If you wanted to add volume control, you would have to sacrifice your playback controls or your noise canceling controls. So you couldn't have everything you wanted, including volume on the earbuds at once. Until now, sort of, because Sony has added the quad tap in. So if you want to increase volume, tap four times on the right earbud, decrease, tap four times on the left. So fine for small increases or decreases in volume. But if you want to rapidly increase, you go to tap four times, wait a second, tap four times again, wait, and then continue on like that. A brand new feature out of the XM5s though is the gestures feature, which you can use when receiving phone calls. So you can turn this on and off in the app and when you're getting a call, just nod your head up and down and it'll answer the phone. If you wanna reject the call, you just shake your head. And in my testing on my iPhone 12 Pro, 
It worked great with phone calls. It didn't work with FaceTime though, but it's still a new thing. I'm sure this can be updated with firmware. Still, it doesn't really make up for the lackluster controls. So I'm ranking the XM5s in the fifth spot here. AirPods are ranked first because they are the only pair that uses skin detection with the in-ear detection to automatically pause and play your music. So you can chuck the buds in your pocket and the music won't resume where with the rest of the earbuds, music will resume. Not only that though, but they also allow you to control everything, play pause, skipping tracks forward and back, noise canceling on and off, as well as volume up and down, all in just the one earbud, since they use force touch as well as a swipe gesture to increase or decrease volume. In the second spot, we have the Bose Quiet Comfort 2. Similar to AirPods, they use a swipe gesture to increase or decrease volume, so you can also control everything on just a one earbud. You can only customize a long hold to noise cancelling or the voice assistant though. Galaxy Buds are in the third spot. You can't control everything on one earbud, but you have the option to add a double tap on your ear to increase or decrease volume, and it works great in my testing. Momentum 3 in the fourth spot, they give you the best customization of each individual touch function. It's just that the volume control is stuck to the long hold, but it still works great and you can increase or decrease volume very quickly, unlike the XM5s. And OnePlus is in the last spot. They're the only bud to not have the option to add volume control. They also use squeeze controls just like the AirPods and it works just as well. Now the next category is connectivity. First, on all of the pairs, you can use one earbud at a time while you leave the other in the case, and they all work in mono mode. So if you're using one earbud, you're gonna hear both the left and the right audio channels coming out of that one earbud. Now in terms of Bluetooth, the XM5s use Bluetooth 5.3. They still use LDAC, but they now also use the LC3 or the LE audio codec, which stands for low energy consumption. So with a compatible device, this is mainly on newer Android phones. You're supposed to get better battery efficiency as well as lower latency when gaming. I just don't have a phone to test this though. And they also have multi-point connection, so you can connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. You just need to pause playback on one device before you resume it on the other. So with all this, I'm ranking them in the tied first spot with the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. OnePlus have all the same features. They just use LHDC instead of LDAC, which is very similar. You're supposed to just get lower latency compared to LDAC. The Momentum 3 are in the second spot because they also have multi-point connection and Aptex Adaptive, which does have high-res audio capabilities, very similar in quality to LDAC and LHDC. The tied third spot have the AirPods and the Buds 2 Pro since they don't have true multi-point connection, but if you do use them in their ecosystem, you unlock better efficiency, lower latency, and seamless connection between devices. Bose are in the dead last spot. You get no high-res codecs. Not a huge issue. They still sound great, but you aren't getting multi-point connection. At their price, really not good enough. Now a bonus round here is gonna be gaming latency. It's only the Galaxy Buds and OnePlus Buds that have a dedicated low latency gaming mode. Be sure to pause here if you wanna have a closer look. This is with my testing on both iOS and Android with the low latency gaming mode on if they do have it. You can see the Galaxy Buds work really well with their own device, same with the AirPods with the iPhone. But generally, casual games, you wanna get around 400 milliseconds. If you're into fast reaction games like shooters, you wanna get closer to 200 milliseconds. Next category is call quality. And the XM5s have been massively improved over the XM4s. Still not the best core quality out there. They are ranked in the fourth spot, but the AirPods Pro 2, in a league of their own when it comes to core quality, don't remember them sounding this good. I'm pretty sure they've been updated by firmware since my last video on them, but here are all the samples ranked worst to best so you can hear the quality for yourself. All right, so starting the test here, recording the audio off my iPhone 12 Pro microphone so you get an idea of the noise going on around me. All right, so here is the call quality of the Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here is the call quality of the Sennheiser Momentum 3. They get two buses in the testing, so hopefully you can hear my voice well. All right, so here is the call quality of the Sony WF-1000XM5s. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here is the call quality of the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here is the call quality of the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here is the call quality of the AirPods Pro 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. The next category is app customization and extra features. So ranked number one, we have the XM5s. 
you get a great EQ, you get app integration with certain games and things like Spotify, you get speak to chat, which will automatically turn your noise canceling off when you speak to someone, adaptive sound control, which automatically adjusts your EQ, noise canceling settings and transparency settings based on certain locations you visit or if you're walking, running. So tons of extra features there. Rank second are the OnePlus Buds Pro 2, also great EQ customization, but you get personalized sound and noise canceling, which most of the earbuds don't have. In third, we have the Momentum 3. They have the best control customization, the best sound personalization, you get sound zones, which are similar to Sony's adaptive sound control, just not as detailed, but no noise canceling personalization, which is why they are third. Fourth spot, we have Bose. You really just get the basics here, but at least you get some nice EQ customization there. In the fifth spot, Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. You can only get the app support if you use an Android device. You don't get proper EQ customization though. You only get presets, but you get some random stuff like a stretch reminder, and they at least have a Find My Buds feature based on location. In last spot, we have the AirPods Pro 2. This is only gonna be on iOS. You get no proper EQ customization, but you do get the deepest transparency and hearing aid customization and the best Find My Buds and case feature. So that is kind of hard to rank there, but it really does come down to what works best for you. Now, before we talk about the noise canceling, if you're enjoying this style of video, please chuck a like down there because it really does help the video and the channel out. Now, how I test my noise canceling, I chuck on my soundbar and I'm playing simulation plain noise and crowd noise, so I'm getting some consistent low frequency sounds, as well as some inconsistent mid and high frequency sounds. And the XM4s still have some of the strongest noise cancelling today. The XM5s improve on them very slightly, but it isn't enough to get them to the number one spot. Here's my noise cancelling ranking with all the earbuds that I have tested, and that number one spot is still held by Bose, AirPods Pro 2 in the second spot, and the XM5s in the third spot, followed by the Momentums, then the Galaxy Buds, then the OnePlus Buds. In my plain noise test, Bose had the slight edge over the AirPods Pro 2, and the AirPods had the slight edge over the XM5s. In the crowd noise test, the XM5s perform a little bit better, but AirPods are just better, and then Bose is just better than the AirPods. And like I said with the fit, the XM5s take a lot of fiddling around to get the most out of the noise cancelling since I struggle to get a good seal with the included ear tips. It's a bit trickier than the XM4s for me since the new ear tips are a fraction smaller than the old ones. I use the largest ear tips on both pairs. So if I use the XM4 ear tips on the XM5s, I get a better seal and slightly stronger noise cancelling. But like the XM4s, they really do rely on the phone tips passive noise isolation. So if I use silicon ear tips on the XM5s or XM4s, the noise cancelling strength is reduced by about 10%. Again, keeping in mind, this is how all the earbuds fit my specific ear canal. The fit can affect how the noise cancelling performs. Slightly larger ear tips would have worked better. I honestly don't know why Sony didn't include one size larger than the larger size that they have. And also keep in mind, Bose uses technology to optimize the noise cancelling to your specific ear canal. So that could explain why the noise cancelling also works better for me. It's only Bose and OnePlus that allow you to adjust the strength of the noise cancelling and optimize it for your specific ear and hearing. Now, when it comes to wind noise, the XM5s don't let too much in since they have a mesh protecting the microphone. Bose and AirPods also don't let too much wind in. The Momentum 3 let in quite a bit of wind with noise cancelling on. That's why they have a wind noise reduction mode, but that's gonna reduce your noise cancelling strength by about half. The AirPods and OnePlus Buds have a built-in wind noise reduction mode, which you can't turn on or off. On the AirPods, it works incredibly smoothly. You don't even notice the noise cancelling strength come down when the microphones start to pick up wind noise, then it's a smooth transition to turning the noise cancelling back on, where with the OnePlus Buds is quite noticeable, and it takes about 10 up to 20 seconds sometimes for the noise cancelling to turn back on after it's picked up some wind through the microphones. Now, the next category is a transparency mode, and there's actually so much that you need to take into account when making a good transparency mode. It needs to sound clear but natural, have a minimal amount of white noise hiss, have a minimal amount of occlusion, which is kind of the pressure and echo that you get when you speak and then hear your voice with transparency mode on, and how much wind is picked up through the microphones, and if they adapt to loud noises as well. Now the AirPods, they're just in a league of their own. You get the best clarity, almost zero white noise, no occlusion, and they automatically reduce the volume of loud sounds and wind. And like the noise canceling, they do it so smoothly. You can customize the transparency in the app with heaps of freedom, where the rest of the buds only allow you to increase or decrease the strength. Ranked second is Bose. They do adapt to the environment noise, just nowhere near as smooth as the AirPods. I'll sometimes just turn a tap on and then the transparency mode will start to switch off. And it's like, it's just a tap. 
relax bows. And they do have the most amount of white noise hiss, but this is really only noticeable if you're in a quiet environment, but they have the second best clarity. The rest of the earbuds don't adapt to loud noises, but in the third spot, we've got the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Fourth, the OnePlus Buds, XM5s ranked fifth. Still a great transparency mode, minimal occlusion, and not too much white noise. In the last spot is the Momentum 3. They're actually slightly clearer than the XM5s, but they have more white noise hiss and they have the most occlusion out of all the earbuds. And I mentioned the XM5s also use speak to chat, so that'll turn your transparency mode on and noise canceling off when you start talking to someone. And the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro also have the same feature. It's called voice detect. All right, now we're onto the final three rounds here, and these are all gonna be based on how these buds sound. So to explain the sound as best as I can, I need to break this section down into three separate rounds, volume, sound quality, and sound personalization. We're gonna get a bit picky here. Now, starting with volume, all the pairs have plenty of volume and they're all roughly the same at max volume. The Momentum 3 and Bose Quiet Comfort 2 go about one click louder at max volume. If you like low level listening, all the pairs here also sound pretty decent because at lower volumes, naturally we hear less bass and treble. So this needs to be boosted slightly on those first few clicks. The best at this are the OnePlus Buds, followed by the Momentum and the XM5s, AirPods, Bose, and the Buds 2 Pro a little bit lacking when it comes to bass and treble at the lower volumes. Bose push out the most bass at the lowest volume, but it can be a little bit much. It really depends on what you like, but OnePlus have the best balance of bass and treble. Now onto the second last round, sound quality. I'm gonna talk about the tuning of each earbud without any personalization and no EQ customization. Then after that, we'll take into account the volume and sound personalization to tie it all together. And jumping straight into the ranking at the number one spot, we have the XM5s. Because the XM4 were already one of the best sounding earbuds on the market and Sony just subtly tweaked the sound, improving the treble, tightening up the bass, that's pretty much it. And with that, you get excellent balance, slightly bass boosted, mids and upper mids are perfect, so you get great vocal clarity without sounding forced and super crisp treble that never gets harsh. You get a bit of sub bass rumble, a nice open sound stage. My only complaint with the sound is with the bass. I was hoping they could focus slightly more on the sub bass and a tiny bit less on the mid bass. Second, we have the Sennheiser Momentum 3. These are neck and neck with the XM5s because you get more deep sub bass rumble on the Momentums, even nicer treble, the best out of all the earbuds. It's just the mids and upper mids that give the XM5s better separation and overall clarity. In the third spot, unpopular opinion, I have the AirPods Pro 2. Not as dynamic as the XM5s, but you still get crisp treble, deep sub bass slightly more than the XM5s, and vocals have slightly more emphasis. In the fourth spot, we have the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. Now, if you saw my recent video on these, I said they were better than the Momentums, but I'm pretty sure they changed the tuning with the most recent firmware update, firmware 186.186.101. They still sound great and are the most V-shaped out of all the earbuds here. Nice sparkle in the treble, the best sound stage, you get thumping mid bass and sub bass, but the mid range clarity has taken a pretty big hit after the update and the bass is also a little bit more sloppy as well. In the fifth spot, we have the Bose Quiet Comfort 2. These have the clearest vocals to the point on some songs, it feels like the vocalist is actually like in my brain, but it can also be a little bit too much and the mids can sort of take over, but you get really nice sub bass, better than the XM5s. The mid bass is slightly lacking and the sound stage is quite closed in. Treble has good detail, but just lacks a bit of sparkle and a bit of presence. And in last place, I have the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. They're still a decent tuning, a nice balance of sub bass and mid bass, mid range on par with the AirPods. It's just a treble that's a little bit harsh above 60% volume. All right, now onto the final round, sound personalization. Now I mentioned all the earbuds have EQ customization to a certain degree. The AirPods sort of have it, but all you can do is increase treble and mids. It's not a proper like preset or band EQ. So due to this, I'm now ranking the AirPods Pro 2 in the last spot. AirPods have spatial audio as well. I rarely use it, but I know a lot of people do like to use it. Again, comes down to what you prefer. Fifth place, Galaxy Buds, since you can adjust the sound, but only with presets, so not the best freedom. They also have spatial audio, but in my testing, not as good as the AirPods. Fourth place, still Bose. The EQ you get is pretty basic, but you do get enough freedom to tailor these to your liking if you like a bit more balance, or you can push out some pretty crazy bass boosted goodness as well. Keep in mind, if you do boost the bass on these, the closer you get to 100%, that bass starts to reduce quite a bit. In third place are the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. Since you get a great EQ, you can make them more balanced, more bass boosted. You can take these buds to some seriously crazy subwoofer-like bass levels. And if you increase the bass, that almost retains completely to 100% volume. 
So the update kind of hindered their overall sound quality, but you can play around with the EQ and almost make up for it. They also have sound personalization through a hearing test and ear canal scan. Now in the second spot, this is gonna be going to the XM5s. You do get great freedom with the EQ and can make them more balanced, more V-shaped. The only issue is when you do bass boost them, like the Bose QC Buds, the closer you go to 100%, the bass is reduced quite a bit. Still an improvement over the XM4s, but they will just sound really strange, closer to 100%. Or on the XM5s now, if you have them on the stock EQ, they sound pretty much the same to 100%, but it's just when you bass boost the EQ, you do lose that bass. And it's to reduce distortion. All buds do this to a certain degree. Some just do it more than others. So now, just in the first spot, are the Sennheiser Momentum 3. Not because of their EQ customization, which is solid, but because they have the best sound personalization out of any earbud I've tested. It's a simple choose what sounds best to you kind of test, but this will enhance the sound well past what you can do with the EQ. For me, it brings out more bass, better clarity, crisper treble, and the main difference is a more open sound stage. And you can really nail down the sound personalization to what sounds best for you. And out of all the earbuds here today and all the earbuds that I've ever tested, you can bass boost the hell out of these and they're gonna retain almost all of that bass to 100%, slightly more than the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. So you can get the craziest subwoofer-like bass if you wanna mess around with the EQ and have a pretty crazy time. All right, so that wraps up all the categories. I didn't really plan on scoring this, but since this is a ranking system, I tallied up all the scores. So the lower the score, the better the Bud performed. So in last place with 51 points, Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Fifth place, 49 points, Bose QuietComfort 2. Fourth place, 46 points, Seni Momentum 3. Third place, 44 points, Sony XM5s. Second place, 37 points, the AirPods Pro 2. And in first place, the cheapest earbud here today with 36 points, the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. Now be sure to pause here if you wanna have a closer look at the scoring, compare if you need. But this scoring system doesn't really matter too much. At the end of the day, take what matters most for you and hopefully that will help you decide which pair to get. If the XM5s fit you better than they did for me, then these are easily gonna be my main recommendation because overall you just get great sound quality, great features and great noise cancelling. So let me know what bud you end up going for. Purchase links are down below and also be sure to check out this playlist here with all my XM5 comparisons. So check that out. Thanks for watching and in the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.